months. It's now August, and at least here in Victoria, a relatively mild summer has given way to some punishing temperatures. We're firmly into the dog days of summer, but one might ask, why are they called this? In order to answer this question, one must turn their attention to the littoral of the Mediterranean Sea thousands of years ago, and the Roman Empire. The Romans were a savage and warlike European people, known primarily for building their huts from stones rather than sticks, as was the fashion in Europe at the time, as well as contributing such words to our modern vocabulary as August, Senate, and Fascist. The Romans noticed that the star Sirius, the brightest star in the night sky, rose very near to the sun in late summer mornings, and they believed that this conjunction was responsible for the especially hot days of August. This theory does not explain why Sirius does not contribute to radiative forcing at other times of the year, nor does it explain why the longer days resulting from Earth's axial tilt do not. Still, it's not the worst idea developed by people who considered lead poisoning to be an acceptable side effect of being a little drunk all the time as a public health measure. Sirius is the brightest star in the constellation the Romans called Canis Major, the Greater Dog, for which it is sometimes called the Dog Star and thus would call the long, hot, languid days they believed resulted from this conjunction the dog days of summer. In other dog-related news that sucks, Cheems has died. After a nine-month struggle with leukemia, the beloved Shiba Inu, whose knowing but quizzical expression charmed the internet, passed as a result of complications from thoracentesis surgery, forever in our hearts. But unlike Cheems, such live, very happening. Wow. From near and far, young and old, people of every shape, ability, and gender, welcome to Loading Ready Live. Today on the show, we just start guessing the answers in another this or that. We realize the platonic vision with the final martini. We relish the quality of no-name brands in Knock Off Nom Off. Ice cream so good. Ice cream so good. Gang Gang. All this and more on Loading Ready Live. Starting right now. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Loading Ready Live! Woo! Woo! Today's first segment is This or That, a familiar segment that we've done many times, but today a twist! Yeah, what's going on? It's hosted by me. I don't understand. <gasps> I have all of the power. This was a very special prepared This or That mm -hmm. that they especially wanted you to be in. Yeah. So I have taken the reins of power and I'll give all the credits and everything because I have that prepared as the final slide. And so they said, oh good, okay. Because <laughs> they, they sent it to Beej rather yeah. than me, which yeah. is normally, and they said, please, please don't let Grant look at it. And so I haven't. <laughs> so I'm excited to do it. So I'm Serge, I'm hosting today. Today on the show we have Kathleen. Yay, that's me. We have Graham. Hello. And we have Matt. Woo! Oh, that's what noise you're supposed to be making. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And today's topic, this or that. North American car license plate, <laughs> real or fake? So it's worth mentioning when we say fake, none of these are fictional. None of these license plates appear in TV shows or in media or anything like that. These are license plates that were considered, proposed, or rejected. Oh. So they were very close to being real. They were real in that somebody made them. Interesting. But they were never, I, I don't know what the, they've, the they've, license plate equivalent would be. They're not legal tender for the never, back of a car. They've never entered circulation. Never been issued. Yeah. Yes. Okay, interesting. So, well, just to make the, the, the language easier, say real or fake. Right. Uh, the points do matter. Yeah, of course. But you can discuss as you always do. We'll lock them in and stuff like that. We'll give Paul a second to update. And I, I hate to do this to you. There is one both. All right. Okay. So Wait, how? Okay, okay we'll, because, come, we'll cross because, that bridge. Because, yeah, this is the worst thing. Because now that you know what's there, you might think, is this the both and all that stuff? But uh, all right, without further ado, shall we get right into it? Yeah. yeah. All right, introducing the first license plate, a special edition Ontario with a Star Trek logo on it. Is this real or fake? Now, why Ontario? Yours to discover. So I know that 
Alberta famously has the town of Vulcan. And I now hang on. <laughs> now is Kirk's fi- Kirk is not fictionally Canadian. No, he's fictionally American, but there but uh William Shatner is Canadian, but he's from Quebec, isn't he? I don't remember. I'm I'm going to say this is real. I'm going to say that this was circulated. I, I think it's real. I will be a dissenting opinion and say Ooh. it's false. All right, real, real, fake. The answer, this is a real license plate. Hey. Uh, available from 1996 through to the early 2000s. If you lived in Ontario, what? you could get that plate. It's no longer in circulation now. Why? I don't know. <laughs> I don't have that much information. <laughs> All right. I that's have the so, answer. That's so weird. Yeah. Huh. Wow. All right. Number two, we have the Missouri Shield Plate available in both the regular version and the handicapped version. A little bit on the smaller side there, unfortunately. What does it say there? Michigan? Oh. No. Something of what? Uh, the text there oh, thanks, is Paul. Kingdom, Kingdom of Kalantir. Kingdom of Kalantir. Yes. <laughs> uh huh. I again. Why? Yeah. Okay. Real or fake? Huh. Fake. Got to be fake. Yeah. I'm gonna it, say it looks fake. I'm gonna say yeah. fake. I, I think we're all. So all three of you locked sure. in fake. Yeah. yeah. We don't think that's a real thing. Bad news. Oh, that no. is a very real license plate uh, made in the state of Missouri from 2002 as part of the SCA the no. Society for Creative Anachronisms. Oh. That is a real license plate you can someone, get. Someone working in the Missouri DMV must have been in the SCA for this to have gotten approved. <laughs> Absolutely. Just like somebody working at the Ontario equivalent of ICBC <laughs> was super into Star Trek. And they yeah. said, no, I assure you, boss, this will make money. Wow. All right. Well, there fair enough. No points in that round. All okay. right. Round three, we have the Alaska Nunavut. This is a... This would be a Canadian... Alaska Nunavut? This is, this is from Nunavut, but it has Alaska written on it. I'm not entirely sure why. Where? What? Where, where is where this? This is Alaska? Canadian. This is Canadian. Oh, I don't know here. why it's... Oh, well, on, the, on, the, on the caption. Oh, I see. oh, Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. That, word. that is a... Oh, I want this to not be real. It looks... Just this font is It looks awful. shopped. Yeah. I, I want to say fake because it looks terrible. I'm going to say real because there are terribly designed things out there that you have seen. <laughs> but how could you live next to the Northwest Territories, the best license plate in North America, and design this? And then put this on your car and not feel immense shame. Yeah. Immense shame. <laughs> yeah. I, I say fake. Lock it in. So we have fake. Was this some sort of special edition when they started putting out none of it license plates? It could be. You have to make the choice. Fine, it's real. All right, so we have real, fake, real, real. This is a fake license plate. Oh, God. This was Papyrus. designed as a souvenir. Oh. Oh. Yeah, it, but never actually considered for use in the province. Okay. Okay. Good, good, good. The Northwest Territories one, by the way, is the one that it's actually, it's die, die cut shaped like a polar bear. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 You see it in chat. Yeah. 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 That is a very cool one. All right, so point for Graham. Not Ooh. a lot of points so far. All right. Our Probably fourth... on question four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's fair. That's we got fair. time. We got That's time. That's fair. All right. Number four. Utah's dark skies. Dark, darkest skies in America. Yeah. Now, that is the thing that, like, is a, a real thing that, like, astronomers yeah. appreciate. Yeah. Yeah. They do, like, like, dark skies means you see more stars. You know, doesn't always have a sort of a, an evil connotation. Mm, sky so dark. <laughs> As Chap points out, very readable. It is. Which is important. You it, know. I don't know if it would be readable on the plate. No. You can do some cool, like, shiny stuff. I think this could be real. Real? I'm a, I'm, yeah, I'm going to go I real. want this to be real. I'd like that I've never license seen it, plate if I lived in Utah. I've never seen it out in the wild. And the fact that it's only a rendering is, like, perhaps, maybe yeah. that should be a clue that it was mm. never actually made. But I want to say this is real. I really like the look of it. I want it to be real. So, so I'll say real. So all three of you locked in on real? Yeah, mm-hmm. dark skies. Got bad news. It's fake. Dang it. So this was proposed in 2021 to commemorate the amazing star viewing of the state, but never actually passed in legislature. Oh. Bummer. Yeah. All right. Why so, do you need to have a... Your, wait, surely somebody who works... It could have been real. Sure. Well, why, did, why does what? the legislature need to approve? Yeah, don't they have more important things to be doing? <laughs> 
Apparently in not. Utah, apparently not. Yeah. <laughs> I oh, I think they do. They just don't want to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, Number five. Yeah, you, you blew it, Utah. DC taxation. A taxation without representation. Yup. I love the idea of getting so legit, like justifiably okay. butt mad about that, that you put it on your license plate. This is a fake license plate that somebody made and put on their car because it says C window sticker for my real license plate stuff. But this is somebody who is mad. And I would say somewhat reasonably so that if you live in DC, you pay taxes, but get no federal representation. All right, mm. fake. I think it's real. Graham says real. Matt? I am completely with Kathleen with that. That's a very good explanation for this. So fake, real, fake? Yes. This was real. <gasps> oh my God. In 2000, Washington DC changed the motto on its plates to no taxation without representation to reflect the fact that the city pays federal taxes but does not have representation in the federal government. Amazing. Wow, that the city was real, so butt mad about it. Yeah. That is the real plate. Yeah. So one point for Graham. Woo. Oh, Graham is the license plate king. I remember looking up state mottos at one point and I assume that that, I assume I lodged that in there somewhere deep as a result of that. Mm. There's some really funny ones out there. That's incredible, eh? Yeah, I love it. All Good. right. Next up. We have the Virginia <laughs> Eyes. Uh, yeah. Oh, no. No. This can't be real. Oh, I don't no, like it. No, look at the... No. Fake. <laughs> I think this is fake. I think this is like a reminder, like a... Like a, like, like a keychain or something. This is mm. like a... Yeah. I'm going to say fake because it says sample, which means that they showed this to the legislature and it didn't go through. The legislature was like, yikes, that's ugly. Yeah. So all three of you have locked in fake. Oh, is this both? No points. No. It's real. This is real. real? Part of a public awareness campaign in the state of Virginia. It's a wow. real license plate you could have. <laughs> but why would you put a pithy slogan on the license plate? You want people to stop peering at license plates yeah. and watch the road. Yeah, yeah. God, watch the road! I was literally in a car accident today. Yeah. Minor. I got rear-ended. <laughs> She's somebody, okay. Somebody rear-ended me because instead of watching the road, they were paying attention to something else. Like your, your license, license plate. plate. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think this is more watch out for enormous eyeballs That's on the road. It could be. They that, have... old, that old far side joke, things in the mirror might be larger than they appear, and it's just the eyeball. Was yep. this the, the, the fabled Virginia Night Vale crossover? Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. All right, next up, we have Florida. <laughs> the fact that there's no E on sample is my... Discover Florida's horses? <laughs> yeah, the does... Florida horse license plate. Does Florida <laughs> does not have horses. Is Florida known for its horses? Or are they to, for to, not yet. To, to horse people feel like they're not known enough for their horses and they want you to come and Look, discover Florida's horses. If I keep saying fake, we're going to get there eventually, right? <laughs> yeah. No. Do, do we have horses? Come and find out. <laughs> <laughs> discover it for yourself. I'll say real. Fake, real, Matt? I don't think this is the standard one. I think this is one that they've tried to do. I'm going to say real all right real real fake fake we got one point for kathleen this is a fake license plate thank now, god again it almost happened though <laughs> this was a proposed design in 2021 that got rejected by the state legislature because they didn't have enough horses they were just like at what point are we a horse place I mean, you don't you don't want to have a license plate saying discover florida's alligator yeah <laughs> uh fox mar in chat no. It's from from Florida uh -huh. say, says that he they see uh, horses all the time. Okay. Apparently, huh. okay, all right. Well all right. known horse state. Fair Walking enough. through the marshes. Sample. All right. Sample. Next up, you could fit a sixth. The Nebraska we don't coast. Plain. We don't coast. Yeah. <laughs> Is that because they are landlocked? Is that the joke? I don't know where Nebraska is. It's in the it's it's a square <laughs> surrounded by other states. All right. Yeah. So yeah, no coast. <laughs> I don't think this is real. This can't be real. No. I think they tried to do a we don't coast as in like cruise control. 
Oh. A PSA against that. Oh! I'm going to say real, also dissenting from them. To All right, so it. we have real, fake, fake. Yeah, I don't think this is real. Good news, Matt. You're on the board. Whoa. This is a real license plate. Seriously, Nebraska? Commissioned in 2017 for the Greater Omaha Chamber of Commerce, <laughs> whose motto is, we don't, we don't coast. coast. Oh, on our laurels. Yeah. So there you go. Congratulations, Matt. You are on the board. Can you tell that I don't drive? <laughs> I mean, Graham doesn't drive, and he's got the most points out of all of us. But he likes design. That's true. I, I do, keep my I... eyes on the road, not on a this license is a plate. Terrible design, also, by the way. Like yeah. graphically, this is bad. Yeah. All right. Next up, Rhode Island Ocean. Discover Sky. Rhode Island. Ocean the beautiful state. ocean state. I mean, what, what does a normal Rhode Island license plate look like? This just looks like a, nor a normal plate. Is this both? This is like two stock. I'm going to say real. Oh. I like the schooner. Yeah. I assume that's one of their, I assume that's what Rhode Island's answer to the blue nose. I assume very, that's the like very a, subtle sail on the top corner. Yeah, I assume yeah. that that's like a, I assume that's a, a, a named boat. Hmm. Uh, Rhode Island is all about rich people with yachts and sailing ships and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to say real because it's too mundane. All right. We have real, real. Kathleen? Both. Oh. Kathleen is I'm with both. I'm using my both. All right. It is fake. Ah. This is not a real license plate, but... It's so boringly normal. It was part of a contest in 2021 to redesign the standard license plate in Rhode Island. This design failed, but the design that was chosen is so universally hated that the contest is being investigated for corruption and the results thrown out. Can you show, can you us, show us the real? I don't have that one no. backed up, unfortunately. Chat, but isn't that you? an incredible story? Chat, chat, I need to That's see the news. Crazy. What did this lose to? Oh. Oh, yeah. It's just, it's got an anchor. It's, it's got the, an anchor and a wave pattern it's behind this, it. it. It's this idea, but worse. And yeah. pastel. Too. Well, it, this oh, idea, man. but probably with slightly more legibility. Oh, so like, there, there you go. go. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, see, it's the... the, the oh, my God, the font for Ocean State. That's this not is good. fine. And then an oh. anchor instead of a schooner. This, the, this the is much nicer. The cartoon waves. This reads much nicer on a car. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. cartoon, the clip art waves. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. All right, next up. We have Virginia Richmond Planet, the and look at that! Look at that bicep. <laughs> what is going on? Is that meant to be like John Henry's arm? Is that what's going on here? And then papers over Do the what's the Richmond Planet? A newspaper? <laughs> Dream for purpose. It says underneath. Yo, there's the license plate tattoo. Too I much. Guess. <laughs> going on here too much here is dream for purpose the license plate equivalent of live laugh love <laughs> <laughs> i think this is too ugly to be fake i think this is real and ill and ill advised what did the, is that a flock of red birds up in the upper right it looks like it yeah I'm gonna, you know what maybe. i'm gonna go with both i'm gonna go with both as well sorry uh, was there a score change on the, la the last one there no, was, no everyone was no, wrong paul sorry yeah, yeah. So we have real both both. Yeah. Kathleen gets one point. Oh. This is just straight up a real license plate. Ha. All what? right. How? This plate was approved in 2022. It commemorates the first newspaper in the state of Virginia published by and for formerly enslaved peoples. The oh. newspaper ran from 1882 to 1938 and was the first black owned newspaper in the state. Wow. I think that's a great thing to commemorate, and they could have done it with much better design. <laughs> yeah. 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 This is not a good visually. It's too much. It's right. too much. So Kathleen is caught up. Three, three, one. Awesome. All right. Next license plate. We have the Arizona Wood. <laughs> I have an overwhelming feeling to record a podcast in front of this license plate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a, that's, a, that's a cell phone, but like this is like, you know, oh, God. They're, the motto just says agriculture. <laughs> I look like this should be on the can. This should be on a can of iced tea. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. Can you just like write a number on a piece of wood and attach it to your car? <laughs> like, oh God. No, this is fake. All right. Yeah, fake. Fake uh, from Graham. Fake from Matt. Kathleen. Both. 
All right, we have the both guess again. This is real. Oh my this God. is a real license plate designed for the future farmers of America and approved in 2010. The only official license plate in the U.S. designed to look like a plank of wood. <laughs> oh, wow. good job, yeah. <laughs> good I would job, say it Arizona. looks like several planks of wood. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, future farmers of America. Next up, we have the Ohio Sunrise Both. license plate. Ooh. Both. That's very busy. But, I mean, I have one of, like, the BC Parks license plates. Yeah, but this is... It's bad. It's both. <laughs> I Matt, think Matt immediately locking in the answer. Aviation. Yeah. yeah. Which is true. That's why yeah. the Wright brothers... Uh, Almost didn't die, or almost died, and but didn't die. there's like a die. person running with a dog on the right-hand side. Love that for them. I don't know what I, city that's supposed to be I on see no reference to the song 46 and 2 by Tool, which is what I always think of when I think of Ohio. But Honestly, you know. fair. Relatable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, real. Yeah. Both? Real? Great. Real. Real? Yeah. Congratulations, Matt. You found the both. Okay, now I need to I need to understand this. Here's the story. The Sunrise and Ohio plate was designed for Ohio in 2021. 35,000 plates were made before someone realized that the banner at the top attaches to the front of the right flyer and not the back of the machine. The image was corrected and the plates were reissued and we have a backup image here because the plane was designed in reverse. A normal plane, you'd think that that was the tail, but that was actually the front of the plane. And oh, so they whoops. had to flip it. Yeah. So check it out. Yeah, there's the zoom in version. The, these incorrect plates are actually quite worth a, quite a bit of money. I now, bet they are. Yeah. I be, I've, I've seen videos of people. There's entire like license plate uh, collecting conventions out there. I've seen some of these. That's very funny to me. I wonder how, yeah, how how many people did it go through before somebody was like, hey, the Wright Brothers plane had the thing on the front, right? <laughs> so it can't... More like the wrong flyer. <laughs> hey oh, that's, that's very funny to me. All right, All right, next up, we've got this, the European style. Right, Ooh. long, okay. Uh, what's that in the middle? What building is that? Courthouse of some sort. Is that a Hague? <laughs> One of them eggs. Can we make this any picture? Any? Can we make this picture any bigger, Paul? Yeah. All right. Ooh, enhance. Puerto Rico. Ooh. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico does it better. Huh. So, oh yeah, PR. So did Puerto Rico ever go for a European style plate? I believe it was probably proposed and then rejected. Yeah. So I'm gonna say this is fake yeah. in the way that many of these have been fake. I think, yeah. Um, the American government would not let that fly. Well, but they, you know, they're not technically part of America, Puerto Rico. Yeah, but they're, they're just a, a heavy thumb on them. <laughs> well, they're, it's part of America when it's convenient for America, but not when, like, say they need help after a hurricane. Yeah, I think yeah. that's the really Oof. important. Oof. <laughs> yeah. Where's yeah. the lie? You're not wrong. <laughs> Make them a state, you cowards. Mm. Um... I think it's probably fake, but I'm going to say real because the other two said said uh, fake. So I'm I'm going for the upside play. Fake, fake. Congratulations, point for Graham. Hey, this is real. <laughs> it worked in 2012 as a result of a large number of European-made cars on the island. Ah. The government of Puerto Rico issued this <laughs> European-style license plate, which is easier to mount than the American-style license plate. That's oh, hilarious. Okay. They just have so many EU cars with that kind of plating. Recess, I guess. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Well. Wow. Cool. That's really neat. All right. And this is going to be our last one. All right. We have the Whoa. Colorful, colorful Oregon. Wow. First of all, I do like the font on Oregon. That is, uh, it's unusual, but I Ooh. like it. Why does it say CU real big? CU in Oregon. I guess. Is Go that, to Oregon. Tell me that's not their new I think this motto. I, I like this license plate. I think it's great looking. I hope it's real. It's busy, but whatever. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I say real as well. This looks entirely like a mock-up and has never. Wait a minute. Can we zoom issued. in a bit? Is there a picture of like a uh, like a a bicycle on there and like uh, a, a violin? Is this some sort of like Portlandia thing? I think so. Yeah. 
I, I trust. think this. I think the CU part might just might be like this. The county that this is oh. like a representative. Yeah, county. there's a yeah oh, there's, there's, there's a there's a penny farthing. Uh, yeah, it's like, like a, a cello. cello. Yeah. Is it a rat beside the penny farthing? Or a wolf? There's it a might be. Oh, it's, a, the, it's a coyote. Yeah, there's <laughs> the, there's the masks of uh, of tragedy and comedy a up in the sky. Yeah, yeah, a I still think it's real. Yeah, I'm gonna say real. It's some sort of fancy commemorative extra bonus plate thing. I'm gonna say fake, but they tried to put it through. So very close by, Matt. Oh, this is actually real. Ooh. This was a plate that was issued in 2021 as a replacement for this license plate. <laughs> oh. Which was so hated. Yeah. This was supposed to be the representative of the colorful and creative background. It and, just looks like meat. Yeah. And people are like, no, 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 no. It looks too bloody. So they <laughs> changed it to this. Good. Oh, to I... represent colorful organ. Can you imagine this being colorful <laughs> organ? What, what license plate do you want? Mm, yeah. Ham? Uh, oh, Off ham? Yeah. Oh, my Lord. It really does look like... Um, I mean, back to Tool, like, there's that picture <laughs> in the liner notes of, of Anima. Sort of reminds me of that. Anyhow, uh, but yeah, no, I would definitely pay the extra, like, 50 bucks a year to have the colorful plate to on my To update to that, I think that's fair. Same fun, I don't good, though. So we have a yeah. point for Graham and a point for Kathleen. Whee! Congratulations to Graham, our winner! License plates. License plates. That was uh, super fun. If I may very quickly... Yeah. Uh, I want to give some shout outs here. This was researched and generated, uh, pardon me, researched by procedurally generated name or oh. generic account name on Twitch. So ah. it kind of threw me off for a second Hello. there. And I want to give a shout out to Nate in Michigan or Pancake Nate on Twitch. So thank you to the two of them for putting it together. Wonderful. And thank you everybody for checking out this or that. I'm the new forever host. Oh, oh, okay. We'll see. I we'll guess that's how that works. And now highlights. <laughs> It's happening! The Cursed Game! We're finally playing! Hello everybody and welcome! And we just got a cease and desist to take the stream down. Oh. Well. <laughs> Thanks everybody. Nobody tells me anything. Yeah, I, I didn't oh, read the oh. script for tonight's oh, stream, that's not so... True. I, People I, bring I their complaints have... to you all the time. Yeah, I whine at you constantly. Yeah, they're rude about it. I tell you all yeah. kinds of stuff. Yeah, Paul, yeah, come not, on. Not not useful things. Either. Oh, I mean, I just tell you things because you're a good listener and I respect your opinions, but I guess all right, not suck useful. up. We don't need any of this. <laughs> Look, I need a raise. Okay, I'm trying to move. <laughs> all, right. all right, everybody. Uh, We'll let's go back. to a commercial. You're wage yeah. blocking me. Hey, that's not a comrade behavior. <laughs> let's play a commercial. When we were in England, it had to have been a joke. We saw a, bl a brand of chips that were called Suckies. Uh, and uh -oh, the subtext suckies. under it was no nasties. Oh my God. What? <laughs> and we're just like, yeah, Suckies, no nasties. Yeah. <laughs> Perfectly ordinary. What a, thing. Yeah, what a normal thing to read. Click enter level. Yeah, all right. Uh, whoa! Ah! Oh! <laughs> I swear that these these unreal are those COVID viruses. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get one more? Yes. <laughs> He's not gonna stop. We're stuck here forever. <laughs> and then a fuddle something. We could callous dismissal the blood token. Yeah. And then we're not, I don't think we're casting that. No. That should be enough, right? <laughs> mm, man, that's good. Uh. <laughs> uh. And we attack. Just the way we drew it up. Man. 
I was saying to Adam before we started that I just really don't play this game anymore yeah. that much. But when you have no, games like this, you're like, no, draft maybe, decks like yeah, this? maybe I should. Yeah. Did you have fun that match? Sure, sure did. did. <laughs> <laughs> the unrealistic body standards that women are expected to. <laughs> I thought everything was squished, but no, I think no, it's, it's just, just her. her and everything else is in scale. Okay, oh we have a double jump. Oh my god. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah, that's that's one of those, you know, there's... Everything's fine. <laughs> it's unreadable. I want a 2-2 of my own. May I have a dice? Yeah. Put a plus one, plus one counter. So if I roll a one, I get to re-roll it. And if it's still a one, then it takes four mortal wounds for oh, one. Boy. <laughs> so. Okay, all right, <laughs> auto chastiser. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the enzymes in pineapple dissolve meat. Yeah. Okay. Like your mouth. Yeah, I heard, didn't see I heard that if coming. you eat semen, it makes pineapple taste better. <laughs> That's what I heard. <laughs> I'm so angry. <laughs> What's in here? Jesus. Fuck it, Norman. We are offering patrons one more hour in the ball pit. <laughs> so you were away so from your zucchini for like a two or three days. I was, I, I was looking in there to see if anything had grown. I didn't see anything. And then I was just about to leave and I brushed aside some leaves and I noticed something that was drooping out of the planter box. This is a zucchini the size of my forearm. This is a <laughs> zucchini the size of it's, my... It snuck one off the edge. <laughs> and go. <laughs> I'm leaving. <laughs> Last night, she slipped it would be into your room, looked withering. you straight in the eye, and said, "This." <laughs> Do you up at breakfast. I'm an only child. Yes. Yes. Oh. <laughs> ben, why are you wearing two shirts? <laughs> what? Somebody in chat said, "Why is Ben wearing two shirts?" <laughs> Oh, just because of the uh, order? Oh, no, honey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honey. All right. It's, it's it's one shirt. Time to call the fashion police on Mistress Bobble. <laughs> and that looks like a standard. I mean, that, that, that almost looks built in. It does, yeah. There's like that little area like above it mm -hmm. that almost looks like the original intention was a larger port in there. <laughs> Let's just see what happens if we uh, if we plug it. How easy that plugs. I don't know why plugging in that USB cable made Ian's microphone turn off, but apparently it did. Well. No! no! Okay, well, that's game. Yeah, we're dead. <laughs> I can't imagine we can win this now. No, I don't think so. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to AFK here on the Loading Ready Run Network, where we are boned. <laughs> Aren't we the good guys? Yeah, we're uh, we're having a tough time here. I'm standing still with wheat in the pen with a bunch of goats, and none of them are charging me. More cats than moon base. I know there's people with allergies, but maybe they can all work from home. Yeah, my grandfather had a had a. So what uh, you're saying is just don't want surge here ever. <laughs> I'd be, I, if, hey, if it means we get like 10 cats at the moon base, I'd be willing to take that replacement. <laughs> Sorry, Surge. I mean, you've already been gone, so I have no object permanence about what you look like anymore. They call me eight sausage Jaeger. <laughs> okay, so that's disgusting. Peep these weenies, they say when they see me coming. <laughs> We sounded like you said peepees weenies, and I'm like, this is uh, <laughs> this is just going this is going downhill real quick. <laughs> Hollow ass bones. So a stiff breeze comes along, and you're in the hospital. Uh, uh, that stiff breeze is how I fucking. Oh, well at least I can drink water, bitch. <laughs> Fuck oh, oh. You you got it. You got it, pal. Bart. Whoa. Meow meow. 
Pant, pant. <laughs> this is the cheapest VTuber rigs in the world. Oh my I god. Have... <laughs> oh god. <laughs> of course I lost some math, G. How did I do the best there? I'm gay. <laughs> what? Did, what? What? Not anymore. <laughs> Sorry. I don't make the rules. We'll be back in a few short minutes, chat. Um, maybe you want to go and demolish your own bathroom. I know I do. I need you to mute the microphones. I can't reach them from here. James, you had literally one job, my guy. Yeah. <laughs> I chose chaos. To answer your question, my dear, you see the horns. Because I allow you to see the horns. Oh. So you're horny on me. Yeah. <laughs> what do I have? I feel like damage I've already seen Galthrop. No fucking oh, shot. That. <laughs> Yo, that was so sick. That was actually sick. I like how you just fucking sat there. That was actually the most, that's the sickest thing I've ever seen. That's true. And he, yeah. but I mean like, I'm not trying to make Beach what? feel bad for going what to- What did you do? I was just like, I leaned back. I knew Got it. Hit, yeah. the, hit the tip? Yeah. No, it just like <laughs> rolled into the just nerve. Like, from it's here, it's just suddenly Cameron's exploding. And the blue hits just keep on coming. Well, you can't activate it. So if you want to, <laughs> if you have a plan to blow that up, fine. But if you want to take it back and untap your land, uh, it's okay. <laughs> no. Okay, okay. I stick with what I did. Okay. The hits keep okay. on coming. <laughs> <laughs> I think if we wanted to go get ice cream, we could just sing at the the counter and maybe they would make us pay. We get free ice cream I with mean, our singing powers. There would have to be a verse about not paying and that would be really awkward because everyone in the room is going to hear it. We'll go during the slow hours. You, you'll mix the stuff and put the candy in for me and give me the ice cream for free and you won't get fired from this cold stone creamery. I think it'd be. I think it'd be just fine. No, you just still have to pay. I gotta work here. I cannot play. I hate working at this Cold Stone Creamery. Way. Stock arrows. That's what are you looking at? Uh, Shrieker, whatever. That's I think a, it's a, that's I think a skulk it's a, thingy. Yeah, yep. that's yep. skulk creeper thingy. Well, here, there's a. They're generally uh, in the ho long hallway. Oh, behind you, James! No! Ah! E block. Thank you for those two hundred and six. You're not killing my character. Thank you for those 260 uh, bits from eBlock. Those I well, you died and you weren't even there. Around. That's so fucking there. good. Please yeah. tell me that's real. Please, Please. tell me. Yeah. And you fucking had the audacity to come to Twitch, <laughs> Twitch chat, chat to, to tell do her. It. That's amazing. <laughs> like, Corey, I regret to inform you that your parents have died. <laughs> well, there's more NPCs. Look at that. With, I, again, what the fuck? <laughs> it's business casual day. <laughs> This is this is actually probably like <laughs> picture perfect for like the first day of a new LARP. <laughs> where you have people who are just like checking it out and other people who are like very committed to the bit. Yeah, this is a Ren Fair. It's, you know, you don't have to dress up to go it's to a Ren like, Fair. I'm, I'm here to pick up my daughter. Uh, it's true. Who Gr opened the Zenith Flare? <laughs> oh. It's true. Graham is insufferable. Yeah, You're doing it. Actually, I'm surprised you caught on. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm like kind of British, but not really. <laughs> oh, Everyone's got a horse, right? I'm say what? right down In the Americas? <laughs> oh my god, is this where we find out that Corey doesn't know what a horse is? And she thinks it's a dog? And this whole time she's been like, I'm just trying to draw those floppy ears, that cute long nose. Oh, candy makes you run fast. <laughs> <laughs> All praise deer. All praise deer. Praise polygonal deer. Oh. How many bathrooms do we need? <laughs> Not up the wall. Why up the wall? Why up the wall? How is the shitter full already? You fucking animal. The first person to use it. The first person to use it shat on the wall. Oh, God. <laughs> Search fell down a hole. 
Is it a one-way mirror? No. It's just at an angle that... Oh my god. Can you imagine if Paul had one-way mirror glass? No. It's just kind of at an angle where none of us can really see. Instead of just his voice through speakers, he's got the, like, pitch-down mod. Like. Yeah. We can't have a one-way mirror in an office that age exists. <laughs> yes. Wait. You're not wrong. Yeah. Uh, one, two... What? Three, Wh which side of the mirror would Beige be on? I will bond him with the near heat pilgrim. No. He's already bonded. You're bonded to Fiend Hunter. You can't really? you're, not, you're not allowed to change yeah. unless I um, it was this dies. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. If if, if an unpaired soul bond creature oh, and another creature. Okay. I thought you could move it around. No, it's like marriage. <laughs> <laughs> you have to go through a process. Or Hi, someone Kendall. dies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can't just move it around. <laughs> Well, you can. There's just repercussions. <laughs> judge. Yeah. Actual um, judge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <gasps> yes. Get your yes. hand out of the way. Get your hand out. Yeah. Yes. Oh, oh yes. who's this lad? Oh, he's got a thing. Want wanted. <laughs> I feel like I just got this off the PC Gamer demo desk in 1995. Come on, Heather. Woo! Oh! He's trying to get an arrow. Yeah. I, I, I did, but not the way I wanted. <laughs> Beej. Yup. Nelson. I was here. <laughs> and Ian. <laughs> Whoa. Yep. Ian uh, replaced the uh, USB connector on uh, four of his uh, PS4 controllers with a USB C connector. Nice. Uh, so now we have uh, three working <laughs> PS4 controllers. Sorry. Uh -huh. I think you said he did four, did you not, Paul? We have to be working. Okay, yes. I see. You always throw out the first pancake. <laughs> yes, you're right. Look, the, the it happens. The, the first one he did works fine, as long as you don't need to go uh, up or right on the <laughs> on the D pad. And now, Ian Horner presents the safety code and requirements for making a dry martini, according to the American National Standards Institute. The American National Standard implies a consensus to those substantially concerned with the scope and provisions. An American National Standard is intended as a guide to aid the manufacturer, the consumer, and the general public. Though its existence as a standard should not preclude anyone from manufacturing, marketing, purchasing, or using products, processes, procedures not conforming to the standard. And as a cautionary warning, the American National Standard may be revised or withdrawn at any time. So with that out of the way, let us continue with the ANSI K100.1-1974 Standard Martini. <clears throat> the scope of the standard of the martini is this standard on dry martini cocktails, including nomenclature, sizes, ingredients, proportions, mixing methods, and test procedures. I won't go through the entire definitions, but the ANSI describes the dry martini as a cocktail made with English or American dry gin of at least 86 proof and dry vermouth, preferably of French origin, in accordance with requirements of this North American standard. Definitions include extra dry martinis, French vermouth, Gibson's gin, Italian vermouth, lemonade, London dry gin, martinis, olives, onion soup, which is the unholy abomination produced by the introduction of one or more pickled onions into a martini, and rocks, the solid state of H2O, which an American national standard dry martini is never served with. Let's move on to section three, sizes. Section 3.1 states that 
in basic nomenclature, the American National Standard Dry Martini shall come in the following three sizes. Uh, regular, not less than three and a half ounces, or 103 milliliters for those in the rest of the world. Two, a large martini, not less than five ounces, at 147 milliliters, or a double at not less than seven ounces. Section 3.2 states that ingredients in relation to size that while we are covered in section four, the regular dry martini is recommended that we use gin not less than 90 proof. Section four states in 4.1 general that there are three ingredients to the martini. Gin, dry vermouth, and olives. The gin is the chief ingredient in the North American National Standard Dry Martini, and it shall conform to the highest standards of color, flavor, aroma, and alcoholic content. 4.2.1 states that the color shall either be watery white or faintly blue. This being a completely clear gin passes the test. 4.22 states that the flavor shall be full, clean, and lacking in harshness when rolled on the tongue and sucked through the teeth. The fluid shall exhibit a soft, supple quality without any traces of oiliness. This bottle of gin offers traditionally dry finish with an underlying essence of the coastal rainforest. It's mildly juniper forward with notes of citrus and touches of floral elements. Pass. Section 4.3 states that the aroma shall be delicately assertive, combining the aromatic elements and essence of juniper berries and pure grain alcohol, according to the label, matching standards. Alcoholic content, if we can uh, bring up the chart for section 4.2.4, states that any of the following commercial strengths of gin shall be acceptable with the exceptions noted. We're working on a 45% alcohol, which equates to a 90 proof. Next, uh, no slide. 4.3 states that the vermouth should be dry of excellent taste, exhibiting no tendency towards sweetness, acidity, or coarseness. I will choose to believe that those at Esquimalt dry vermouth for the delightfully bitter, peachy, herbaceous, and off dryness will fit the bill. Olives. While the use of olives are not encouraged, nothing in this specification shall be construed to mean that the inclusion of an olive will not be acceptable, provided it conforms with Table 1 and 4.4.1 and Section 4.4.2. We'll get there. In Section 4.4.1, we note that the olive should be commercially green. And Section 4.2 states that olives may not be used with a stuffing. Now, we should check the olives to make sure that these are of appropriate size. So let's have a look here at our olives. Grab one out there. Okay. We're looking at 20, sorry, that's 20 millimeters in diameter of the olive. So let's bring up some calculations here. So at 20 millimeters diameter, that's going to be, uh, let's see here, do, 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 four divided by three times pi times the diameter divided by two cubed means that we are looking at a spherical radius of four, or sorry, a spherical volume of 4,188 millimeters squared, which when converted to inches is, do, 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 4188.25 of an inch, which means that this olive is within maximum size for a regular martini. Continuing on, proportions. <clears throat> no other single element is more critical in the preparation of North American standard gin than gin to dry vermouth and its ratio. There are no minimum requirements for vermouth in an American National Standard Martini. Can we have the next chart, please? Table two states that if we're looking at gin of 90 proof, we want to have a minimum 17 parts gin to one part vermouth at a drink size double or large. Uh, we'll need to mix it though. And for mixing, we have several options. Section six states that the apparatus used for mixing can be a container, stirrer, calibrated measure, ice strainer, and a 60 watt incandescent lamp. We have all of these. 
pieces of equipment at the ready. <clears throat> Option one, stirring over the rocks. Crushed or cracked ice shall be used. At least 90% employed shall be at least one cubic inch or larger in size. <coughs> Correct. Should be stirred for not less than 30 seconds and more than one minute. The ingredients shall be stirred by one of the methods indicated in figure one, please. The figure eight, the clockwise or counterclockwise directions. Be sure to stir forcefully, but not so forcefully that you get a uh, excess amount of melted ice. You may also blend the refrigerated ingredients without ice. Thank you for the figure. Uh, if doing so, make sure to chill your gin, your vermouth, and your receptacle to no higher than 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and refrigerate the mixing containers as well. Finally, we have section 6.2.3, which is my preferred method of mixing the, uh, uh, the systems, as uh, it allows you to make an entire bottle of martini at once. Allow me to observe. We'll be taking a 60-watt incandescent lamp, and placing it on a flat surface exactly nine inches from the sealed bottle of vermouth. Can we bring up figure th three, please? Thank you. So if we add the olive here and we measure distance from the light bulb, this is approximately nine inches there. Uh, add 23 inches between the vermouth and the gin. That takes us to this distance here. All right. Now, importantly, <clears throat> when the lamp and bottles are suitably arranged, the lamp may be illuminated for an interval of seven to 16 seconds, depending on the colors of the glass. Longer time frames will be required for colored glasses in the vermouth. Less so for clear glass, we're going with the seven second interval. Uh, one moment here. Siri, give me a seven second set countdown. No, you can't do that. Well, let's bring up the stop. Oh, wait, no, we have a timer. Seven seconds on the clock. Let us begin. Seven seconds elapsed. The vodka has been properly infused. Now it is time to complete the martini. As we are going for a double martini, we are going to be looking for at least three and a half ounces of vodka. Let's crack that open. It's important to make sure that your martini gin is sealed during the radiation procedure to avoid any form of outside contamination. Three and a half ounces is, I believe, close to 100 milliliters within tolerances. Let's make sure that we don't have any information in the system here about glass. No glassware defined. You may choose your own. I choose a tumbler for maximum insulation. Let's insert a control device into the olive. Add the gin. And there we have an ANSI 100.1-1974 standard martini. Thank you. And now, by way of rebuttal... And now, by way of rebuttal, Beach.
Next, Gib answers your toots. Oh, hi. Uh, I saw you there Be because I set the camera up myself. Um, hi, welcome to this corner of a room in the new moon base, which uh, I'm kind of getting used to. This is the show formerly known as Gib Answers Your Tweets, but uh, booted up my computer for the first time in a while. I don't use it much. And after a considerable boot up sequence, tried to log into Matweetman's, and it's not Matweetman's anymore. It's X going to give it to you. And the color's all different, and it's posts instead of tweets and reborps instead of what's it's and uh, everybody I blocked is back. So, I don't know, it sucks now. Anyway, I went over to Mastodon and made myself a Mastodon. Uh, anyway, it's time for me to answer some toots. Apparently they're called toots now. All right, let's get rolling. Pahorum asks, So Gib, how federated are you exactly? I legitimately don't know how to respond to this. I know there's a word people use on this site, but I looked it up and it seems like nobody's using it correctly. Or like they've invented a new way of talking. Look, it's bad enough I gotta answer toots now, but don't make me worried about how many boops and reflorps my toots are getting. At least it ain't blue sky. Anyone ever catches me posting a skeet, you can immediately set me on fire. Don't even get me started on threads. Oh, great, I can't even post without logging in different. No, no, but it's user-friendly though, sure. Okay. Next toot. Sop he asks. Got any tips for becoming nocturnal? I don't know why you need my help. People do this all the time. Sometimes people do it because they have a job with overnight shifts, like convenience store clerk or murderer. And sometimes people do it by accident because they're staying up really late since it's the only time in the day when other people aren't asking them for stuff and they just want some more control over their life. Don't care about when you go to bed and it'll just kind of happen. Next, Cobalt Blue asks, I'm stuck in a Walmart waiting for car service for an hour. What should I do? Well, uh, you asked me this a week ago, so I hope you aren't still there. I guess my advice would be don't get your car serviced at Walmart? Is that even a thing they do? 
The ones around here just sell acceptable groceries at prices we're willing to spend because the other Canadian grocery monopolies are terrible. Sorry, where was I? Oh yeah. Scrabble around the flat pack chicken to find the most weight for your buck. Next, Danielle asks, Dr. Gibb, how should I placate my PhD dissertation committee? Uh, snacks, probably. Like a charcuterie plate or maybe some pate. You ever tried a terrine? The fastest way to the master's degree is through the stomach. And now, Hyperial Guard says, Dear Dr. Gibb, how should I deal with the endless dread in my heart? Also, comma, favorite pie? I think you answered the question within your question. Shore up the walls of your dreadful heart with your favorite pie. For me, I don't have a huge sweet tooth. Unless that's been previously established, I don't watch all the lore. So I'm a fan of savory pies like a Melton Mowbray or whatever those Australian meat pies are. They, they just call them meat pies and expect us to be okay with that. And I am. Same answer, both questions. Meat pie with red sauce. Now, Min asks, Dear Dr. Gibb, I need you to clarify this prescription. It just says, great good. I need a milligram strength and directions. Also, any refills? Well, you want to start at a lower grit, like 60 or 80, and do several passes, slowly increasing the grit until you reach the desired smoothness. You probably don't need to go higher than 600, but at a certain point, it's personal preference. Then coat with something like, you know, like a polyurethane sealant. External use only. And now, Reddit asks, I am finally visiting Canada, BC specifically, at the end of the month. What hidden gems should I seek out? Apparently you can find argillite and corundum, but I've never found any myself. Uh, there's loads of jade around, but I wouldn't call it very well hidden. Pretty sure there's a TV show about it. On your way to the quarry, check out the enchanted forest near Revelstoke. It's weird as hell. And when you escape, it's time for... Nate Hehem asks, if sweet sauce is bad and sour sauce is bad, how can sweet and sour sauce be so good? I reject the very premise of this question. Who told you sweet and sour sauces respectively were bad? You never had a raspberry coulis or a dark chocolate dip? Sour sauces are great too, though on different things, I suppose. Like I wouldn't put a citrus vinaigrette on ice cream. But what if I did? No, 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 that's silly. I'll make Pistachio try it and see how he likes it, and then maybe have it based on his reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have some experiments to try. Now, James Tur- oh, good. James Turner asks, So there's This Is The Story Of A Girl Who Cried A River And Drowned The Whole World, And While She Looks So Sad In Photographs, I Absolutely Love Her When She Smiles. What Do I Do? Uh-huh. Look, I get what you're doing here, but if you do actually want to keep following the progress of frontman John Hampson from the one-hit wonder Nine Days, you should marry that girl and have a family with her that long outlasts your pop culture relevancy. Sounds like it's time for an awkward conversation with your wife. For me, though, it's time for... Newt Newt says, asking for a friend. What should he do after stumbling upon buried treasure? He wants to keep it, but I'm telling him he should share it. How badly did he stumble? You can probably sue the owner for improperly storing their treasure. That's where the real money is. Tell your friend they should give you the treasure and they can have their legal winnings. It'll be fine. I cannot represent you legally, but I'd be happy to do so morally. Next, Ars Veritatis says, where in the new moon base do you go when you need some time away from the others? Oh, I like to sit near the hot water tank. It's got a slow leak, but Bartleby doesn't bug me in there because the heat and humidity reminds him too much of his time in Madagascar. The, the movie. Apparently the recording booth was really uncomfortable. And he says all his scenes got cut. Saying all this out loud, I'm realizing he's probably lying to me, but I've never really cared enough to interrogate his nonsense. Huh. Where the water smells like swine. Which brings me to... Tyleraman. How do I get my writing career big enough that I can quit my terrible corporate job? Uh, try double spacing. Or, or using a bigger font. Oh, actually, wait. Do both of those. And print your books on A4 or even legal-sized paper. That'll easily make your writing bigger. 
Now, where are you going to get all this large paper, you ask? Well, before you quit that job, raid the copy room. Now, a tiny space marini says, what extinct animal do you think should be the mascot for the Fediverse version of Tumblr? Oh, 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 the great auk. It's like if a penguin and a puffin had a weird giant baby. It's another in the long list of animals humans have extincted for no reason other than they had the misfortune of being useful and tasty while also stupid and flightless. Justice for the great auk, really. Anyway, I think it makes sense for Tumblr because their social colonies were incredibly dense. Also, the last ones died getting choked out by sailors, which, judging by your posts, is how a lot of you want to go out too, you weirdos. Let me ox you a question. And now, Mike says, I have followed some of your previous advice, and now everything is on fire. Help? Hey, look, Mike, I'm not one to victim blame, but uh, I'm pretty sure this is somehow entirely your fault. Oops, time to wrap up the video. Goodbye. All right, you know what? I'm just going to say it. Toots ain't bad. Get yourself over to Mastodon and start trumpeting right away. At least stop going on platforms owned by billionaires. Threads. God, what was he thinking? Oh, right, I gotta turn the camera off. Mm. Is this blood orange sorbet? Uh, not, not quite. Uh, there's citrus in it, but it's, uh... Ice cream base. Huh. Well, I've got a lactose sensitivity. Well, I give it a shot anyway. I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah, I guess it's not good to be completely intolerant. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Hello, and welcome back to the knockoff nom off. Da da da. <laughs> Basically, what had happened was. I was, uh, there, there is a, there's a Canadian based dollar store. I don't know if anyone knew, it's incredibly based. I don't know if anyone knew that it was Canadian. Mm -hmm. uh, Canada, I believe. Called the Dollarama. And I was in the Dollarama a while ago and I realized that they sell chocolate bars. They sell, they sell normal name brand chocolate bars that you would expect to find. Uh, but they also sell their own store brand knockoffs. Um, and I, I, I was wondering, Hmm. How, how well have they mirrored the actual brands? And so today, we are going to be doing a taste test comparing name brand chocolate bar to dollar store Dollarama knockoff chocolate bar and see if we can, see if we can pinpoint which one is the knockoff. So, uh, music maestro, while I introduce our first pair of chocolate bars, uh, which uh, will be going head-to-head -head between Snickers and Titan. Oh, what a name. Titan implies a lot of things and none of them are good. Oh my, they look so Wait. similar. So please try not Snickers to... Snickers eating his own son. Please try not to interfere with the dice. That's how I'm telling which is which. Titan, okay. the space racist of chocolate bars. Now, how do you want us to do this? you want us to taste one and react or just grab both and kind of go back and forth and figure it out? Where was Ashley? Up Williams to you, really. I'm, you know, you're going to have to taste both and then I'm going to ask you to tell me which one's the knockoff. All right, can you pass me one, please, Kathleen? Yeah, you don't need to do it like one at a time. You can all, okay, sort, okay. Of, you can all okay. sort of get into it at once. When was the last time any of you had a Snickers? Uh, pretty recently, because oh, okay. I'm a goblin. They satisfy. <laughs> One of these has dark nougat. Ooh. Wow, you're right. Significant difference in nougat's color. The Thickness, too, but that doesn't tell me anything. See, I don't, I haven't tried any of these, so I don't know what the differences are between them. I just know that it's very obvious from the branding and the, uh, and the, the, the makeup of it and how they describe it, that they are trying for a one-to-one -one relation. Oh, wow. Hmm. The difference in, in chew, in, by, in tooth, in toothiness. Yeah. Between the, is a, the second, this one. Mm -hmm. They're so visually different too, though. Mm -hmm. But this one, good, good But taste-wise, they taste pretty similar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This one has like definitely a much more distinct Peanutiness. Mm -hmm. Especially the toasted peanut. Mm -hmm. Number two is way more peanutty, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This one tastes like the gym mats <laughs> that are spread out 
for nap time at kindergarten, but they didn't clean up after everyone spilled their chocolate milk. That's well, damn that's, that's that's I did not think it. it was that bad. You no, it really that. wasn't that bad. No, no it wasn't yeah, that bad. Disagree. But it was texturally just, uh, All right, so we're, are we guessing the real or the fake one? The fake one. Which one is the knockoff? Number one. Number, Number one. one. Everybody is correct. That was Titan, which I would have thought would be the one, the the Mars analog, right? Yeah. Mars and Titan. Yeah. Or something. It, it had no peanut to it, but yeah, I, was, but no, I, I had a little chunk of Titan has mm. Titan has peanuts in it. It so, had less, yeah, way less I, nougat. I, yeah, sorry. I would have figured Snickers would be met by something like Nickels, Milkers. I don't know. <laughs> Jesus. All right, here, pass me the plates. So I, I get regret those this. <laughs> Vein bar. Yeah. All right. We move on to chocolate bar number two, where we're going to be seeing head to head between Kinder Bueno and Crispy Delight. Oh, that's no bueno. <laughs> I have never Crispy had a bueno Delight. before. <laughs> now, oh, no. I, I believe that this is the animal. This, this one, I'm going to level with you, was tricky because this one was not obvious. Uh, but I believe that this is what they are going for. So here you are. One of these is Kinder Bueno, and one of these is Crispy Delight. This is one I can't tell based on visual alone. Good. Can you pass me a number two, please, Kathleen? <laughs> get your, get, It'll be a number two I'll later. let you handle your own brown, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Start with, mm. start with this one. The mm. one that looks like pillows is delicious. Mmm, it tastes like Ferrero Rocher. Oh no. There's the melt. Mmm. This is really quite pleasant. Oh, well, actually, one second. I'm not gonna let you uh, visually investigate the uh, mm. packaging, but I'm just trying to... Oh, I do not like that one. Mm. You oh. don't like this one? Oh, interesting, okay. Sorry, I wanted to investigate. Oh, you know what, no. The hazelnut. <clears throat> yeah, it's yeah. a very strong hazelnut. Yeah. They should both. <laughs> they should both have hazelnut. Two it's, tastes like hazelnut. One tastes like someone tried to sample hazelnut using the eyedropper tool in Photoshop and messed up horribly. I inhaled the, the <laughs> wafer bitty. <laughs> I'm sorry. What were the what were the two options here again? Bueno and not bueno. <laughs> bueno and not bueno. Uh, Kinder is bueno. It Kinder bueno or crispy delight. One of these is uh, so they're both milk chocolate with hazelnut. One of them has a wafer, and one of them has crispy puffs. But which one, like? Yeah, I'm yeah, I this is pretty good, trying. honestly. Maybe I just have low standards for candy. Who hasn't had their number one yet? Right. Well, you had five ones. Oh, wait, what? Really? All right. Mm -hmm. Do you want to have a one? There were five pieces of number oh. one. <laughs> <laughs> He's Did anyone get some beach to the rescue? He's gonna wash that martini out of his mouth. Some real malt balls flavor yeah. from number one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right, number two so definitely more hazelnut. Which yeah. one's the knockoff? Oh, number one. Number one. Number one. Number one. You are all correct. That was Crispy Delight. So I'm going to admit that was a tricky one because I looked at it. There's no immediate analog to the to the uh, to the packaging and to the appearance of it. And I was like, it's meant to be a crunch bar, but no, because a crunch bar is not filled with hazelnut. Mm. So all right. It's good, honestly. I didn't They're mind both it. quite tasty. Yeah. I'd be perfectly happy eating any of these knockoffs. Uh, maybe on the first one, not as much. Not you know, as if a... you didn't have a Snickers to compare it to, though, you'd be like, hey, this is Snickers Honest, enough for me. Honestly, yeah. Fair enough. All right, next up, we have the battle between Mars oh. and Meteor. Oh, oh, look at the branding. Meteor oh, yeah. than one. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. The only chocolate bar with a real strip of bacon. So. <laughs> I gotta say, Mars is probably one of the chocolate bars I've had more than other ones. Second, probably only to the O. Henry. I gotta say, actually, before you take them all, can we see camera seven for a second? Because this one has, I would say, the most comparable like yeah. visual similarity between them. Yeah, like visual the, similarity. These are exact up to the top. Yes. Yeah, the top texture is slightly different, but otherwise, the interior looks identical. Thank you very much, Kathleen. Thank you no, for will, passing the brown. Will they oh, win on? Okay, the they, they look almost identical. Yeah. But I'm going to say number two has a thinner streak of caramel and less chocolate on top. Mm. I've watched enough of uh, Claire Saffet's old content to know how difficult it is to ape a uh, name brand uh, <laughs> chocolate bar. So I'm, I'm already impressed. 
You folks do any sneak a little bites in the uh, in the dollar store to check for yourselves? No, I haven't had any yet. Mm. But uh, I bought, as you can see, I bought two of each bar so that we could have the presentation versions. So there's plenty to try afterwards. Oh, very. Despite looking so similar, pretty huge texture difference mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. between one and Taste two. Taste two. Mm -hmm. Ch Chad has kind of blown my mind that apparently Mars is different other places. Yeah, it's t it's it's very different in in other countries. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like the Smarties thing. Yeah. Mm. So one has much thicker, much more pillowy nougat, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and much more chewiness. It's yeah. Number two is really sticking to the teeth. Interesting. Uh, for now, Maricat, hold hold your hold your deep dives on on these until. <laughs> until after the event, please. Um, all right, so, wait, I'm, I'll wait till Kathleen gets her last bite in. Sorry, I've got to compare. Yeah, I know. I'd like to find out something about the ingredients too, if we've got time for that. I, yeah. I, I, I bet that the knockoff, whichever one it is, or whichever one I'm gonna say it is, mm. has a higher concentration of high fructose corn syrup than actual mm. sugar. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm. Yeah, this was chewier, so it took longer to sort of clear your palate between tastes. Mm -hmm. All right. Which one do you think is the knockoff? Two. two. Number two. That is correct. Oh. <laughs> this so far, judge panel batting a hundred. So far, everyone is completely aligned in this. Beej is scrutinizing the ingredients at the moment. Any any insight? Uh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Which one contains arsenic? <laughs> Here. One of these was poisoned. A twist. There's more corn syrup in Mars. That explains the thickness to whip mm. it up. Yeah, but there's See, only, I... they've only named glucose syrup multiples of times in the meteor. <laughs> Interesting. So yeah, number one ingredient in both is sugar. Mm -hmm. yes, you'd expect. Then, well, because it's, and then, yeah, syrup. Huh. Interesting. Well, nougat is technically the first ingredient, but uh, they break, the meteor breaks it down by like, it's like nougat and then caramel and stuff, mm. and then like parenthetically breaks down the ingredients right, within right. nougat and caramel. So it's challenging to uh, to to figure it out. Perhaps I've asked too much for an in, for an improv to an analysis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two is definitely. I found two to be sticker, uh, stickier, and absolutely and, and thicker. Wow, that's yeah. hard to. But, <laughs> interesting. Yeah, right. two had like stickier nougat that was chew, took longer to chew, mm. but one had pillowier nougat. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and that's extra layer chocolate. I also noticed, uh, for whatever it's worth, that the nougat in two seemed to have melted a little bit. When they were pressing the knife through it, it did look yeah. runnier. One mm -hmm. I felt was more yeah. balanced. Mm. All right. All right, so I'm going to uh, ask you to not scrutinize the visuals of this next one too closely, because they sort of crumbled apart <laughs> as, part the, as part of the, as part of the, part of the, uh, the, the slicing process. Mm. But for this round, we are seeing the head-to-head -head between Kit Kat, Chunky, and one of my favorites, For Fun. <laughs> this is gonna be hard. The fun oh, is the laters. I've never heard is literally heard calling fun. itself the casual. <laughs> so, as you can see, I sort of have like... Yeah, we've always done one and two on it. Oh, I'm sorry. Just to keep it consistent, Whoop. thank you. Yes. There we are. I did wash my hands. That's hard to Enjoy. That's a shrapnel. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So. Never seen a chunky Kit Kat. Oh, you're missing out. Kit Kat Chunky are great. When they introduced them, people were like, what is this? This is stupid. And then we tried them and they were like, oh wait, this is actually awesome. That's not bad. Mm. Two mm. was good. Mm, two's not bad. I found, um, hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm. One has much better um, crunchiness retained in the wafers mm -hmm. than two, which suggests to me, like, this is a kind of a problem in food science, mm -hmm. right? How do you keep something crispy when it's, like, you're, contained in something else. You're not wrong at all because if you even look at them, I mean, I, you told us not to look at them, but the uh, the visual striations, the, the layers are much more visible in number one than they are in number two. Mm -hmm. And if that has something to do with the, keeping them uh, separated and more crunchy, that makes a lot of sense. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Apparently in the, US, in the US, they're branded as Kit Kat Big Cat. 
which is what? I vastly prefer Kit Kat Chunky as the name <laughs> yeah. of the name of the bar. You know, El Gato Grande. Exactly. Mm. What 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 is the dead giveaway for me on this one is is the crystallization of the chocolate. Oh. And there is something about a Kit Kat's chocolate that is oh. crystallized unlike any other chocolate I eat. It's all the aftertaste for me. Mm. Yeah, there's a very there's a very distinct Kit Kat finish. Thank you for bringing that up because I absolutely loved the taste of the wafers in number two more than I did number one. Mm. Yeah, number one had, they had a kind of a multi aftertaste. This a actually bit. had coffee to it, I think. Mm. All right, well, oh. then yeah. let's see. Let's see if all the judges are on the same page on this one. What is the knockoff? Number two. I'm on number one. Oh, interesting. I think, I think unless I got them backwards when I grabbed them, I thought number two had that distinct Kit Kat aftertaste mm. for me. So we have Ian on two, everyone else on one? No. Other way around. No. Everyone else is on two, Surge is on one. Yeah. Uh, Meaning, Surge does not get a point. Ah, number man. one was the Kit Kat, number two was the Four Fun. Interesting. I don't know, Four Fun was pretty good Sorry, though. Let me, let me. Yeah, like the Four Fun wasn't actually bad, it had a different flavor. I preferred the texture and the, the eating experience <laughs> of number one. I got them but backwards in my hand. Actually, oh no. I got them backwards. Two ah. didn't feel like it was a letdown. This oh. was absolutely the best analog, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, I, that might that might uh, have a run for its money now as we move on to our next chocolate bars, mm. as we look at Twix oh. versus Duet. <laughs> They're really... <laughs> well, oh. they even went with a serif font. Oh yeah, it's the same brand. It's gold bars, two per thing. It's the same, it's very much the same branding. Except that, that Twix clearly has four in it. Oh. Well, it's a double Twix. This is the thing, All the most of the Dollarama ones have two, are like double, Double bars. They're all like king size or doubles or whatever, except for some reason I could only find king size Twix. Okay, I, so number two, the wafer is much darker. Yeah. But how much have you ever scrutinized a Twix? I've never scrutinized More a Twix. Things. I would say the ratio of chocolate and stuff is almost dead on. Great question, Gilnox. I believe that uh, these were the, the, uh, the right hand bar of both. Thank you. The, the right hand of each pair. That's something oh. I've often wondered if it's possible to tell the difference. That was part of their ad campaign for a while. Do you remember? Was that it? was their big, they did a big thing of like, is it left bar or right bar? Is it, It's basically the Twix equivalent of Diamond Shreddies, mm -hmm. right? Where they were like, none of this matters, but we're going to make up a fake thing. Make people argue about it. Diamond Shreddies was kind of brilliant. Diamond Shreddies was genius. Was that they just, just said that they, they just turned them 45 degrees and they were like, look, look in your Shreddies. Some of them will be diamonds now. And some people were like, no, nah, I don't like it. Shreddies were square when I was a child. It was, okay. mwah. I, I know which one is which. I do as well. Mm -hmm. But again, I'm very, it, it, I prefer number two mm -hmm. because of the taste of the caramel. The, the caramel was stickier. It was chewier, it was much more present. One is all wafer, two is all caramel. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. one slightly, is a lot more crunch. Slightly darker flavor too. Interesting, yeah. yeah. All right, so which one is the knockoff? Two. two. We're all point to two. 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 two and two. Two is the knockoff. That's yes. correct. But you liked it better. Yes. You, you preferred duet to I, Twix. I like number one, but I mean, okay. I mean I, the 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 cookie in number one I thought was better. Yes, yeah. me too. Mm. Yeah. If you like caramel, two is better. If you like sort of the balanced cookie yeah. crunch, one. Interesting. Like I, it really feels like they have for a lot of these knockoffs, they have nailed kind of like the flavor and the ingredients of the actual ingredients, mm -hmm. but number one feel, or the, the commercial brand, the original, feels like it's benefited from 60 years of food scientists. Oh yeah, yeah. Adding exactly the correct yep. kind of oil and like to balance keep the and things ratio. crunchy yeah. or separated, yeah. mm -hmm. right. right? Well, I'm very excited for this, our last bar, because this is the showdown between Bounty oh. and my favorite name, Island Bar. Oh. Island Bar. <laughs> Island Bar. Oh, I legitimately love Bounty Bars, even though it's not cool to like Bounty. I've never had one. Really? They're so sweet. Oh. Are you allergic to coconut? I am not. Good. G given what the cravings of my mother during the pregnancy, I'm probably like 20% Bounty by volume. So I, I don't know how to evaluate this because I've never had one before. Wow, these look identical. Yeah. Like number. Number one, Here, Kathleen, like, number two is much thicker. Kathleen, can you show me? Um, All right, so yeah, we can see number number two here is squared, 
And number one here is slightly rounded, but that's basically the, the they're, they have a very, number two has slightly thinner chocolate, but they have basically the same core ingredients. So some people are asking what is, what is Bounty? Basically Bounty is milk chocolate mounds. This is why I love mounds because you can't, until recently you could not get dark chocolate Bounty and it tastes much better with the dark chocolate, which is why I'm a big fan of Mounds, which you can't get in Canada, you can only get them in the States. Now, Bounty doesn't have almonds in it. Does Island Bar have almonds in it? No, but you're saying it's Mounds, right? When Mounds have almonds, that's No, mounds. that's Almond Joy. Mm. Peter Paul makes both. Peter Paul Almond Joy and Peter Paul Mounds are two different chocolate bars. Mounds is just dark chocolate Bounty. Two, two has almost like a, a perfumey aftertaste, <clears throat> which is really interesting. One is like chocolate and almond. Two is chocolate and almond and Mounds is almondless something. joy. <laughs> Here's my problem. I have a real issue with this one. Okay. Because I can't tell based on the coconut. That's what's throwing me off right now. Mm. Number two, well number one has a very uh, dense coconut layer. Very sweet, very chewy, and I'm, I'm actually going to think that that's probably my pick for fake, just based on consistency of caramelization. Two, I thought might be the knockoff because I can't, the coconut feels like it's gone off. And I can't tell whether that's because it's a better quality coconut to begin with that can go off after a certain amount of time, or if it's just cheap coconut being used by the knockoff. Oh, interesting. I've got chocolate all over me right now. Yeah, that'll happen. Boy, I'm so glad we had small pieces, and I'm so glad we're out now out of bars to taste. <laughs> I thought we had one more. There's the breakdown of all of them. Uh, I, I thought we had one. I'll, I'll show you in a moment. But first, let us let us decide. Uh, what's the knockoff? Two. Two. Oh, we got one, one, two, and two. Oh! The answer is Island Bar was number one. <laughs> oh! I'm behind by two points. Hey, we did it! Holy so shit! Island Bar was number one, really? Yeah. So that's huh. a, a point for Ian and a point for Cameron. Point for Ian and Cameron. So Close. one was better balanced. Here we go. I went by based on the, the shape. The shape was a, was a big tell for me too, on uh, which one I thought was uh, was wrong. I expected the knockoff to be more square and less rounded. Yeah. Huh. So Are you absolutely sure? <laughs> yeah, can we, uh, can we get a judge double check here? <laughs> They tasted almost identical. I was mm -hmm. going by oh. shape and the fact that number one was a little bit thicker, so I figured two was like, and like two ears. So I Interestingly, I just, found, sorry, go ahead. Number one's coconut was um, denser and felt more compacted. Whereas I would say that number two's coconut had been blended something with something to keep it um, a bit frothier maybe, yes. or a bit looser. Yep. Interesting. And it feels like number one's coconut had been compacted over time. Whereas two's was like foamier mm. almost. Yeah. And easier fresher. to yeah, fresher, mm. easier to chew, uh, with a better texture. Mm. Mm. Uh, Beach was just looking at the labels and noticed that while they're they're all of the Dollarama bars are imported by Dollarama in Montreal, Quebec, uh, they are also all of them produced in Turkey. Huh. Except maybe for fun. Which is interesting. Do they I, make a Turkish delight analog? I do want to show you. Uh, it's just called delight. <laughs> that I got confused by uh, by something in the Dollarama because I thought that this was a knockoff, but it's actually just a promotional thing uh, because there was there was also uh, there was Hershey. There was cookies and cream Hershey, and I thought this was the Dollarama knockoff. Cookies and cream, her for she. <laughs> <laughs> But no, it's a, this is a, this is a, yeah, it's a, it's a promotional campaign that Hershey's is running. Oh my God. But I, it's, Wait, to tie in for the movie, her. No, no, it's not to do it. It's, it's, um, uh, it, uh, it's a, like a women's month thing. This oh, is, okay. this is a uh, Faye Johnstone on the, on the art here. But I was oh. like, her for she, that's, I was like, oh, well that's, that's just really funny. But no, it turns out it's actually just, uh. It's actually just Hershey cookies and cream again. <laughs> so what I'm curious about is, mm. was there an aspect, like, like you all did very well on this. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. Was there an aspect that all, all of the fake bars 
uh, are, are, are all of the all of the knockoff bars uh, had in common? That was sort of the tell. Uh, slightly less chocolate, like thinner layers, like yeah. just uh, a little less ingredient. I found. There's Although a... I did get the like, I could have sworn the Bounty knockoff was number two because there was less chocolate on it. There, there was go. a much thinner layer of chocolate on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Usually, there's a bit of a visual tell if you're familiar with the chocolate bar. All right, we're gonna open it. Yeah, yeah let's yeah, open it right for front. It. Which one was square? Which one was rounded? I will say. To the benefit and to, you know, like, I guess, shout out, question mark, to Dollarama, I will say that okay. um, uh, these these bars were, uh, most of them, they varied a little bit. Most They're of them were, were 50 yeah, cents. That's, that's more hmm. round. So, like, you, yeah. the, the price is kind of hard to beat. I, I will tell you with absolute certainty that the, the caramel, the nougat, and the, whatever the binder is for that coconut, Mm -hmm. Are all coming out of exactly the same vat in, uh, in Turkey. <laughs> they, they, they have that extremely similar flavor. Why is Bounty like a linear Twix? Why is it two <laughs> in two pieces? A, yeah, <laughs> cereal Twix. Well, that's the Bounty. It, it always comes like that. I don't know. I know, why. I know. If it's it was just... only one piece, it would just be like a standard bar. Yeah. But if you get two, that's a Bounty of chocolate. They taste, I feel the coconut one is definitely the best dupe. I feel like yes. those are, yeah. I mean, that was the only one we had a big split See, on. Everyone else is fairly unanimous. I, I, I come down on, I disliked the bounty. Can I have another bounty that? I just want to confirm that I was of getting- which and which. So that's the real so one. So this is bounty. Yeah. And then here's the fake. Here's island mm. bar. No, I, I just need to feel the coconut in this one. Oh. You gotta really f feel the coconut. Yeah, you're right. It's airier. It's more natural in that. You know, they're trying to make it feel more natural that way. And I think you're getting that. That I don't like dry coconut. Yeah. And I'm definitely feeling dry coconut with this. Whereas with the knockoff, it tastes more like caramel with too much coconut in it. Mm. And I think I prefer that flavor. And that's why I like the knockoff. But know that the one is bound to you. Wow. Mm. Shout out to Island Bar. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. Well, hey. I mean, this is not sponsored by Dollarama. No, it's but, not. You know. But if they want to, bring it yeah. on, Dollarama. We'll take your we'll take your sponsorship dollars. Two dollars and fifty cents. Yeah, we'll take the we'll, yeah sponsorship dollar. That's how probably how they operate. Uh, yeah. Well, hey, great job, everyone. Uh, by and large, uh, you know, nailed it. But single tier. It was you know like not just that it was good. Uh, you know, you were all identifying it, but also that it turns out most of the Dollarama bars were not that bad. No. no. Yeah, like if, if your grandmother bought you one of these to keep you quiet when you were seven, yeah. you'd have no idea. No, not no. a clue. Yeah. I mean, you'd just be happy you got chocolate. Honestly, as an adult, I'm like, mm, I got to eat so much chocolate. Yeah, yeah. this has I'm, been the best way of me knowing that I can eat these bars now. Yeah, my my favorite is uh, Snickers, so I'm gonna go try a Titan, and I'm fascinated to find out. So. Yeah. Uh, but that brings us to the end of this episode of Loading Ready Live. Thank you all so much for watching. Thanks everyone here for participating. And now this. And now, news for cats. Meow, 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 meow.